Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. So what do you say we rip off this band-aid and finally wrap up the Twilight Saga? Here's Breaking Dawn Part 1. It's not too late to change your mind. So we start off with Jacob, getting pissed off that Bella and Edward are getting married. I guess even after he knew she was engaged, that her kissing him to keep from dying on purpose in the last story made him think he still had a chance. I am hotter than you. We then see Bella, attempting to walk in heels, but since she can't do anything else, I don't know why we would expect a former ballet dancer to know how to walk on her toes. They suck. Trying to walk and chew gum at the same time again, Bella? And that night, Edward goes to make sure she still wants to marry him, because if she didn't, that would just be the worst thing that ever happened to him. And after she says she's sure, he tells her about a murder spree he went on, but tells her not to worry about it, because they were all bad guys. I'm vengeance. It's like you're Batman, only gay. But she's like, dude, that is totally fine that you killed a bunch of people. And he's like, but when I change you, you're gonna wanna be all murdery too. But she's like, hey, if you did it, then I can do it. And he's like, okay. And then his brothers take him on his bachelor party, where they plan on killing animals in the woods. Those buttholes. Will there be strippers? So she goes to bed and has a dream about everyone at her wedding being murdered. Weddings. They bring everyone together. Then before the wedding, her mom gives her a family heirloom that she can pass down to her children. But of course, once she's turned, she won't be able to shit out any kids. Ah, the, 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 the. okay, good. Glad we covered that. But it seems that Jessica already thinks that she's pregnant. We also see that Mike doesn't understand how genetics work when he sees the cousins of a family who he knows are all adopted. What a gene pool. But then Bella starts down the aisle, and she looks like she doesn't want to get married at all. But it could just be jitters, or it could be that she has a bunch of werewolves on her side that might start killing all the vampires. This could turn into a bloodbath. But no, she's just worried about tripping because she sucks at walking in heels and they're doing the wedding in the backyard. Just don't let me fall, Dad. But then she sees Edward and gains the confidence to walk on the dirt path. I know I can do this. So their minister does the basic courthouse legally binding marriage ceremony, and they're married, and then kiss for so long that everyone left. Or at least wishes they had. Well done. Too much? No. Not at all. No. No. At the reception, one of the cousins, Arena, after hours of being there, suddenly can't be around the werewolves because they killed Laurent for going after Bella. Victoria won't be happy about my killing you. But she doesn't believe that. I don't believe that. Because she was banging Laurent, so she fucks off. During the speeches, Jessica isn't shy at all about her jealousy, and drunk Charlie explains how he's gonna kill Edward if he isn't good to his little girl. I know how to use a gun. Jacob then shows up and tries to talk her out of changing again, and she says that she's gonna do it after the honeymoon. And he's like, it's not like you're gonna have a normal honeymoon, or did you forget that your blood needs to pump to get boners? I promise that we try. If this doesn't work. You really should have figured that out a little earlier. But she's convinced that she's gonna get some, and he gets jealous, and also concerned that if his penis does still function, that he could kill her with his venomous jizz. Got some, um, a drool. Then Edward hears him fighting and comes out, but then all the werewolves come out to tell Jacob that it's not up to him to protect her from any toxic semen that Edward still has in his body. So they all fuck off. And then Mr. and Mrs. Cullen fuck off to Brazil and still make it there in enough time to enjoy a street party. But then, they take a boat to a private island where someone left several candles unattended for their arrival. This place is a death trap, you understand that? Edward wants to go for a swim, but Bella thinks, I know you don't sweat, but I do, and we just did our wedding, the reception, no less than a 15 hour flight, danced in the streets, then rode a boat for God knows how long. So sorry bro, but I smell like a goat. Bella, what is that god awful? That's probably me. How can you stand to be so close to her? It's not without difficulty. So he goes to the ocean, and she takes a whore bath then freaks out over the idea of her husband seeing her naked for the first time, and Alice packing tons of lingerie for her, like all they were gonna do is bang all week. Alice gets married at 18. But she realizes he's gonna see her naked a bunch all this week, because they're gonna be banging the whole time. So she joins him for a late night skinny dip, and then they bang. I'm coming. I don't want you to come. But it only lasts 10 seconds because he's out of practice since this jackass decided to wait until they got married. Nothing, if not traditional. I can't tell you how sorry I am. It's okay. I can't imagine that it gets any better than that. I know it's not the same for you. It definitely won't make my list of top 10 favorite evenings. She then wakes up after Edward killed a chicken or some shit, because I doubt they were having pillow ripping sex while she was asleep. Or at least I hope not. I'll try anything. Edward then apologizes for making her look like a domestic abuse victim, and she's like, it's fine. I liked all 10 seconds of it. Didn't really want to spend my honeymoon writhing in pain. But since he bruised her, he doesn't want to have sex with her anymore. So they play chess. But she still wants the lumpty, so she tries to be sexy, and he just laughs at her. 
It's too bad you're not sexy. I can be sexy. And then they go hiking, and she tries to be sexy again, and he covers her up. You're not gonna let this go, are you? No. Well, then I hope you enjoy disappointment. But then she wins at a game of chess, and she's like, now you have to bang me. And he's like, okay. But then she wakes up crying because that part was just a dream. Believe me, I want to. I just want to be married to you first. I lied. You believe me so easily. We then go to Jacob, who's worried about Bella since she's either going to change or die. But Sam says that he can't kill Edward for doing either one of those things, even though it breaks the treaty the two clans have. Alpha's orders get obeyed whether we want them to or not. Jacob then talks shit about imprinting and how finding the one and being happy must suck. And for Bella, it kind of does because Edward still won't bang her. It's the only thing she cares about. It's not like you're going to have a real honeymoon with him anyway. It's gonna be as real as anyone else's. And while he's out at the mainland, she makes breakfast. But after a few bites, she goes to vomit. Did his poison penis turn her? No. Well, then why can't she eat? Well, she can. The vomiting's just from morning sickness from being pregnant. She is not pregnant. Okay. Although she probably would have thrown up anyway after eating fried chicken, peanut butter, and yogurt together. That's disgusting. Dusting. But no, she got knocked up from the 10 seconds of wet noodle humping the other night. It's supposed to be working. And it's growing at an alarming rate. So instead of having Carlisle come to the private island, they go back to Forks, where they know everyone, including werewolves, that might want to kill him for this happening. We're not killing anyone. But to prevent people from coming over, she calls Charlie and tells him that she got sick and they're staying on the honeymoon longer. Super. That makes me really happy. So he, of course, tells Jacob, who freaks out, and goes straight over to the Cullens house. So you're still alive for now? It's been two weeks since they left the island, and she looks like a pregnant heroin addict. Hey, um, what the hell's wrong with you? So Jacob accuses Bella's husband of getting her pregnant on her honeymoon. You did this. Well, what did he think happened on honeymoons? You knew this was gonna happen. Well, remember, he didn't think he could get it up, let alone a hole in one. What a happy surprise. But now she's pregnant, and nobody knows what to do in this situation, because it seems to be killing Bella, but they can't even use an ultrasound to see what's up with the thing inside her. So most of the Cullens, including Edward, want her to get rid of it. Carla will get that thing out. But Bella wants to keep it, and she really only has Rosalie, the one who always hated her, on her side. Why is she helping her? Well, the whole reason that Rosalie hates being a vampire is that she wanted babies, and with this baby killing Bella, she might finally get what she wants. Bella wants to shit out the kid and have Carlisle turn her after, but Edward wants her to get rid of it, so he asked Jacob to try to convince her. Though I can't figure out why he thinks you'd listen to me. I mean, you never have before. He even says that he'll let Jacob kill him if Bella dies, and he's like, Okay, but she's pretty sure she can birth out the demon baby, so he fucks off. But because of wolf telepathy, the whole tribe knows what's up with Bella. When they meet up, they're like, we've got to kill that fucking baby. Once it's born, it won't be able to control its bloodlust. Why does everybody think it's going to be evil? Well, the Cullens think it's going to be evil because their oh-so-wise housekeeper told them it was already dead. What? But the wolves decided to randomly start a war that could have vampires from all around the world descend on the town that they're supposed to protect because they have a hunch. An inkling. You got an inkling? But Jacob isn't having any of that shit and goes back to the Cullens house to warn them of the coming werewolf attack later that night. And Seth goes too. But if they're already all together and pissed off, why don't they go kill Bella now? I mean, that would be smart, but Leah shows up to tell Jacob that they're coming now. But then they just wait around until night anyway. Unfortunately, the Cullens haven't hunted in weeks, and they personally showed the wolves how to kill vampires in the last story, so it's not looking good for them. Then you have to factor in that the three wolves that they do have on their side lost their wolf telepathy when they left the pack, so now they can't even figure out where they are. Here they are! So the next day... I thought they were coming now. I, I don't know, I guess they changed their minds. Sam's lost the element of surprise. But couldn't Alice have seen them coming? I can't see past you when you're pack of mutts. So the next day, Carlisle tells Bella that the baby is growing too fast and is sucking up too many nutrients for her to replace. So she's gonna die before she can give birth. And Bella's like, okay. But Edward's like, do you think I'm gonna raise the baby that killed you? I'll take her. I, I see this as an absolute win. Later on, Jacob thinks that maybe if the baby got some blood, that it might possibly stop feeding on Bella. So Carlisle's like, dude, I got some in the fridge. And Jasper's like, you have been holding out on me? So Alice takes him for a walk. They give her some blood, and she's like, yummy, and starts chugging this shit. So now that she can function, she calls her dad, who she tells she's going to a medical facility in Switzerland because she's feeling better. It's just not normal. And then Edward starts hearing the baby's thoughts and finds out that it's not a demon baby. It's actually pretty nice, and it tells him that it loves him. 
which of course it doesn't say, until Bella asks Edward if he can hear the baby's thoughts. Sounds like it could still be a demon baby to me. Oh yeah, that thing's a fucking monster. I mean, that's what I would say if I was a demon baby. I know your moves, you little bitch. But Bella could go into labor at any time, and they're almost out of blood. So Jacob takes Seth and Leah to go meet with the pack. He wants them to take those two back, and says that he'll kill the kid as soon as it's born, so they don't need to be all stalkery anymore. And while this is happening, Carlisle, Emmett, and Esme run through the wolves' territory to go to the hospital and get more blood. But I'm still not sure why they didn't just drive there. Because they're fast. But then the wolves realize that Jacob pulled a sneaky on them, and they fuck off. When he gets back to the house, Bella tells him what she plans on naming the baby. If it's a boy, it'll be named Edward Jacob. But if it's a girl, she's going to combine their mother's names and call her Renesme. Renesme. <laughs> and no one thinks that this is a good idea at all. Does your mother not like you or something? But Edward tells her that it is because they're pretty sure she's not going to survive the birth and he can just name it something normal later. So then she immediately goes into labor, but Carlisle isn't back yet, so they have to perform the C-section themselves. You know, your lack of confidence in us is a little insulting. After the first cut, Rosalie can't handle the blood, so Alice needs to take her out of there. But she must have taken the scalpel with her, because Edward bites the incision the rest of the way open, and then delivers the kid, while Jacob reminds her to stay alive. Keep your heart beat out. So Edward gets the baby out, and even though he knows how important it is to change her immediately, There are some conditions that even Venom can't overcome. He takes a sweet ass time playing daddy instead of saving her. Better you really be dead than one of them. And then she dies. Edward then stabs her in the heart with a syringe of his venom, but it doesn't work because it can't circulate since her heart isn't pumping. So Edward tries CPR, while Jacob tells him that him having to live with her death on his hands is better punishment than him killing him. So he fucks off, and a spy wolf sees him crying, then apparently forgets it has wolf telepathy, and runs back to the reservation and tells the rest of the pack that the demon baby killed Bella. So they all head to the Cullen's place to kill them. And Jacob's like, fuck that baby. It killed the love of my life. It has to die. So he goes into the room that Rosalie took the baby in to probably lick it clean, and he's gonna kill it. But then, he makes eye contact with Renesme, and he imprints on her. He's like, oh, this is the love of my life, and one day I'm gonna... You know. What? No, 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 you're not. So the wolves show up and start fighting the Collins until Jacob comes out and is like, you can't kill the baby. She's my girlfriend now and you have to respect that. And they're like, okay, and fuck off. I know how this ends and I'm not sticking around to watch. So since the CPR wasn't working, Edward just bit her all over her body to spread the venom. And that worked, but it's going slower because of the morphine they gave her for the delivery. So they give her a sponge bath and put her in a pretty dress so this walking corpse will at least look kind of okay when she wakes up. Okay, I like this one. It makes my boobs look good. But after the morphine wears off, her cuts heal, her ribs and spine reattach, and her hair changes color, and she gains 15 pounds, just as you'd expect. It's like this miracle or something. All right, so I'm ready to flush this turd. So next week we're gonna do Breaking Dawn part two, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. That's an order. Oh, she's right. You can't be serious. Tell me you're not that stupid. I know this seems like a scary thing. Don't be a coward. You deserve to live with this. Oh. Mm. Goodness, no. They have something I want.